Okay, today's uh, a great day because today I'm going to be discussing if this editor keyboard from Blackmagic is worth it. Uh, let me get set up and then we'll jump right in. Was it a gas purchase or was it worth it? Right off the bat, this thing is premium, okay? Top part is like a metal, to double check what the specs is, but it's hefty. Uh, it's got this big like hand rest, which is nice. Feels like they really put their thought into how to make this uh, an enjoyable thing, even though it's massive, right? Like you have the um, speed editor, which is about 300-ish dollars. And then you have this editor's keyboard, which when it first came out, I believe it was a $1,000, but they brought it down to 500-ish dollars. It was at this moment that I realized I screwed up the price. I'm sorry. You might be asking yourself, Danny, why the hell would you spend that much money on a freaking keyboard? Let me just tell you, I've been editing in Final Cut for 10 years and I love Final Cut. I will recommend it till I die or until it's dead, which I don't think is gonna happen. I love Final Cut. I love what Apple has done with that program and it's been phenomenal for my career. With that being said, there is a point in your careers when you start to, you wanna like level up. And one of the things I wanted to level up um, in the coming years is my like color correction and color grading, um, that skill set. And where is the best place to do that? Well, it's Resolve. Every single time I went to go to Resolve, like it was just, it, there was always a struggle. I needed to commit myself. And so I decided to pony up $500 and purchase the editor's keyboard rather than the speed editor, even though like at the time when I was researching, I didn't really, the speed editor was basically kind of mostly focused for the cut page, but since uh, purchasing this and, and some other updates that have come out and you can use it both in the cut and edit page uh, very effectively. And it's even more beneficial now because you can use it with the iPad. You can still use it with the iPad, but then you're losing your USB-C port. So um, ultimately, if you're cutting with the iPad and Resolve, I'd go with the speed editor. If you want me to review it, the speed editor, if this video gets uh, a thousand likes, I will purchase a speed editor and we'll do a review on it. One of the biggest people that influenced me to making the purchase was actually Still Motion. Uh, wait, it's a British production company. And I told myself I was gonna create 10 videos in Resolve before I ditched it. And I've done well over that um, in now, cause that was about, uh, I don't know, Sean, what do you think? So yeah, two months ago was very beneficial because um, not only did I do this, but I got uh, the up and running with Resolve from Ripple Training. They, that was a great, as well as creative editing. I'll, I'll leave his channel, I'll link it up here. He also has some great reviews on, or tutorials on Resolve. I appreciated that there was keyboard uh, like color coding. There's three setups on this wheel, which I actually really love this wheel. It's very, um, it feels very nice. It feels fluid, especially coming from Final Cut where Final Cut feels fluid just naturally, especially with the magnetic timeline. So you can scroll the timeline very, very quickly or you can do jog, which is more a little bit more precise. Uh, and we'll get into that in a second. And we have shuttle. Shuttle's a little weird, it's a little different. When I initially watched my review, he actually said he didn't use a shuttle. But I found that like, if you're in an edit and you need to watch, but you're not quite making full edits, you're just kind of like, trying to see the process. This is a really great, or if you're doing like a long interview, this is kind of a, a great feature because you can switch over to shuttle and then you just slightly adjust it to your speed because it's adjusted to how fast you're doing it. And then let's say you need to do something, you could quickly come over and it'll stop at that location. Switch over to jog and then, you know, it's tweak to wherever you need to go. It takes some um, getting used to, but there's that. The other thing you can really do, especially when you're in the cut page, is you can have, you have in the timeline, or you can hit source, and that jumps up to the source tape. We won't get into some of these features, but you can, um, I'll do another kind of basic intro to resolve, or you can find something else on YouTube. But so I can come up here and kind of scroll and see that. And then when I'm ready, so let me show you what, why this is a little bit beneficial. This is on the, ed the editor's keyboard and the, uh, speed editor, but there's this close up button right here. So I have a talking head right here. And oftentimes as an editor, you might want to punch in because there was an error or you, you want to make a cut. So I can hit close up. It's automatically going to add that close up. It's going to punch in a little bit. It does some AI stuff and it does a pretty good reframing. Cut page, there's like this smart edit point. And you can see here with the, the little edit point, there's a little indicator. I can hit trim out and that selects it. And then I can use a jog wheel to roll it backwards and then line it up to where I needed to go. So now I've actually remapped the tab button to be another space bar. Cause if I'm over here doing some stuff on this side, I didn't want to reach over to the space bar. So I ended up moving tab to um, that side. So obviously, oh, so that was like too close of a cut. So I'm gonna 
roll over here, get the smart edit. I don't even have to be by it. I can just make sure there, and then I can get that nice cut. So I hit space bar, boom, we're good to go. And it's pretty sweet to do that. On the speed editor, they have added an adjustment so that if you hold, if you double tap the close up or you hold the close up and you use the jog wheel on the speed editor, you can actually adjust, adjust that close up like Y or X value, I think. Um, and that's something I wish that this could do because that, that, that way I didn't have to take my hand off the keyboard and, and then go into the inspector and then like, let's say tweak the, the headroom or whatever, just a little bit. Um, that's something that the speed editor has over the editor's keyboard, at least from what I, uh, from some of the research I found. If I hold down the swap and it's going to move that clip when it's just on the, the timeline. The other thing is like, let's say here in this clip, I needed to tweak it. I can hold down the slip tool and and then I can tweak where I wanted that, I want that to go, which is really nice. I like that I can be able to do that. Um, I also like that if I add, um, a, you know, there, I can also change the transition duration. So this is something you can do in the speed editor, uh, is that you can do, uh, you can change the, you can adjust the transition duration and then double tap the transition duration to save that as the default transition length. And then if I wanted to, I could add like a smooth cut for like in those, you know, those, talking head portions, which I have used, and it's actually quite effective. It's helped me to understand the mappings and how uh, Resolve works, especially because I'm not a function key person, and having the function keys up at the top to be able to do some of those things that I was very accustomed to do with keyboard shortcuts in Final Cut was huge. I think one of the biggest things, especially with the cut page, is the video only or audio only. Um, one quick thing though, if you're coming from Final Cut to Resolve, is that if you do video only on like this, I don't know if this is on the speed editor as well, but probably is that you have to, you can't just like, uh, there's not like a, a button to go to, rem go to to both. You have to hit the video tab again to go back to video and audio. Uh, same with audio only. And you can see that there's like an indicator in the timeline on the left-hand side to do that. In the cut page, um, and this is beneficial with these, these buttons over here, is that there's a smart insert button. And so if I'm here, up here and I want to can in and out over here, and then once I hit stop, I can do smart insert. And what that does is when I go back to the timeline, you'll see that their smart in insert was not by my playhead, but it was indicated where the nearest edit point was. And if I hit smart insert, it's gonna insert into that spot. It's pretty nice to do, especially when you're like trying to do a assembly cut, uh, to be able to just have everything over here. Uh, the source overwrite button is actually really beneficial when you're doing sync bin, and that'll be done in another video, but it is pretty nice to be able to just hit source overwrite and it'll put it wherever, it doesn't matter. It, I don't have to have my playhead near where that time marker is, like you would in a, like a, um, uh, multi-cam setup. I can just hit source overwrite on a section and it'll automatically place it where it's synced in that sync bins timeline. You can do a lot of the same stuff that you would do in the cut page with the edit page. So if I'm over here, I can select and I can trim here. Um, obviously it doesn't have the like trim features more it's like it's standard. But if I go in trim mode, I can do the same thing I would do in the cut page and come over here and you know slip the source there are some up a couple of notable features about this thing is that there is a use two USB ports on the back right here so that you can plug in like a drive or um, I actually have my um, loop deck plugged in, um, which is pretty nice, but you can't tweak like the change these setups, which I don't know why you would want to because these are pretty, you know, they're, they're there for a reason, which is kind of the reason why I ended up getting this. Would I recommend this to people or was this just a gas purchase? It's a little bit of both. I would highly recommend this to people if you are an editor and you're editing a lot every single day. And the reason why is because it, even though the speed editor has a couple more additional features, and again, I don't know if Blackmagic, you know, if I they could do an update to add some additional functionality that the speed editor has on this keyboard. I've been pleasantly pleased with my experience with this editor's keyboard. Is it a high price tag? Yeah. So that's why I feel like it's a little bit more of a gas purchase but it was a commitment that I wanted to make personally to learn Resolve and to get comfortable with it and use it in and learn some of the skills that sets, skill sets that it provides where Final Cut lacks in, in with color grading and whatnot. So what, what would I recommend for you? If you're an editor on a regular basis, I do think that this is a good purchase if you're willing to fork up the money. Editor Rubio here. I just wanted to let you know, I didn't love how I was describing like who should purchase the speed editor and I want to be a little bit clearer. So. If you are somebody who 
already has been using Resolve, but want something to help maybe speed up your workflow just a little bit, especially at, uh, with the cut page and want to like jump into that aspect, I think it's a great purchase. Even if you don't use a ton, purchasing it because you can then cut on like an iPad now, it, it could be really beneficial, especially if like you're trying to do a vlog or you're trying to create some reels like on like a family vacation or create something for yourself. I think it's a great setup rather than having to take your full laptop and whatnot. I don't know. Take it for what it's worth. Honestly, look at your budget and then go from there and then maybe go with the needs and what type of person you might you tend to be when it comes to gear on your desk as an editor. And that's something you may not know if you're new to editing. I hope this was helpful. I know it's a little difficult. Like it really is difficult to help explain the experience this what this of what the editor's keyboard is like. But I hope I did my job and I hope it was beneficial to you. If so, leave a comment down below on why you decided to get a speed editor if you have or if there's any other questions about this that you'd like to know and I'll try to answer them as I get to them. I'll see you guys in the next one.